every server below this one right now is like kind of dead at this time of day. Like, look at this shit. Like, look, this server is literally empty. There's nobody there. There's 50 players on this server. There's 89 players. I mean, come on, this is nothing. They shattered their community with the way that they launched all of those shards. And then it took them so long to actually stabilize stuff that they, they just destroyed their community. And so apparently there's problems with their last patch. I'm so and I have a, a video here from Kira that I wanted to check up because I wanted to see what the problems are of the last patch. Because I haven't been playing it myself. Like, look, I don't have time to play broken games right now. It's like I'm only interested in playing games that I can actually get invested in because my time is extremely limited. So let's see what's happening with this last patch. Game Studios has just released their first big post-launch patch for New World, which is titled Into the Void. Now, there is a number of jokes you can make here about New World entering the void, <laughs> but that is low-hanging fruit. So instead, <laughs> we're going to talk about the reception. What the fuck? Come on, Kira. What the fuck, dude? Why you got to be so savage, man? Look at this shit. <laughs> right into the Omega lull. Like, what the fuck? What's wrong with you? <laughs> of this patch, what has it done? As a content creator that has covered the negatives of New World recently, talking about the multitude of broken features and the unsettling amount of duplication exploits that have been... And by the way, I, I realize that some people will say that Kyra is just trying to hate on it and to make like a, a hate video because I know that there's going to be a lot of people that, you know, if they watch this video from the New World community, they're probably going to go like, oh, you're just a hater. You're just hating on... It's like... Do remember that he made a podcast episode with the Lazy Peon where they spoke at length for one hour about how both love playing this game, but also both acknowledge that this game has some serious fucking problems that they can't seem to get their head out of their asses. I'm pretty much in the same boat. Like, I love this game. I think this game is a blast to play. It's got really good moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. The problem is Amazon keep fucking it up. And they keep like making these weird ass decisions. Like there's, you know, I have some very specific ones that affect me that annoy the fuck out of me. Like the the whole, you know, you need tuning orbs to go to dungeons. Like, dude, your game doesn't have that much content. Let me fucking spam dungeons if I want to. Like, why, why do I need to go on this, this fucking like God knows how long to craft the fucking tuning orb? It's like, why? Just let me go into the dungeon. Tuning orb. Tuning orb these nuts discovered as well as abusing invincibility glitches i've had a lot of comments saying something along the lines of why don't you talk about the new updates that have fixed loads of issues and made the game much better so today we're going to examine this new update and what people are oh, saying about it spoiler alert this update has made a lot of people very upset and it would seem from my perspective to make the game that already struggled with an extremely poor end game progression system objectively worse with this update, they have ninja nerfed a ton of content and gear people had already grinded for, literally retroactively downgrading people's items that they'd grinded or crafted, made the acquisition of gear considerably worse and more- Why? What? Why? Why would you nerf gear that people have already acquired? Time consuming, meaning that if you hadn't already grinded to get to high watermark, you're now being punished for having not done so, meaning I you will catch so up to players at a significantly slower rate than previously, oh, meanwhile doing the same... Oh, no, dude, did you really make it worse? It's like, that gives me even less of a reason to come back. Like, I was looking for reasons to get back into the game, and you, you just made it worse? Why? Oh my God. Odin5, thank you very much for being gross and get us for 22 months. Tip of the hat. Appreciate the support. Guys, let me just turn on the lights real quick. Why would you make the grind worse? Like, what, what's, the, what's the logic behind that? You're supposed to make it easier for people to catch up with the people that are high level. That's what every game does. 
Why don't you make it harder? It's like, yeah, let, let's make it harder. Let's make the grind harder. Then again, the grind for the, the high watermark system is not particularly enticing to me. I remember doing bullshit like that during the Destiny 2 days where I would have to use equipment that I didn't want it to use because back then you actually had to keep it equipped in order to get the game to drop the higher light level items, which was the most ridiculous shit because like, I remember having like epic gear that was really good and then it's like, oh, but I have this blue gear that I don't want to use. And, and usually it would be like weapons where I would have like a really good d weapon in Destiny 2. And I'd be super pleased about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, I got this great fucking assault rifle. It's really good. It does everything that I want. Then the game would drop me like a sniper rifle that sucked ass. And on top of sucking ass, it's a sniper rifle. And in case you guys aren't aware, I'm not a big fan of sniper rifles in most games. So it's like... Not only it was a weapon I didn't want it to use, it also sucked ass, but I'd be forced to use it because it had a higher light level. And I'd just be like, wow, th thanks. Fucking thanks. And, you know, that's kind of like the shit that you have to do in this game too. Content, but for longer and with more artificial, unfun difficulty. And, oh, of course, in New good World job. fashion, they've managed to delete players' items from the game completely <laughs> with no chance of restoring them. Hey, you weren't using that item, were you? Hey, you know what? I should, I should check to see if they deleted any, any of my shit. I, I should check. Just out of curiosity, I should log in. Oh, wow, dude. Cortana can't even find New World. Thanks, Cortana. You're so useful. Here, let's do... Here we go. I'll, I'll launch it and we'll check out to see if I lost any items while we're watching this video, okay? I want to see if, if they deleted anything off of me. For just no reason at all. Now, for this video to make sense from this point onwards, you need to understand what the high watermark system is in New World, as I will assume not everyone has reached Endgame and is familiar with what that means. I'll now let Asmongold explain what that system is, since I think he summarized the system and its issues. Is this the one where he says it's dog shit? <laughs> he just calls it dog shit, dog shit ass bullshit or something like that. Extremely well. Now the high watermark system is, in my opinion, one of the we worst in-game progression systems that's ever been conceived in an MMO before. At level 60, you begin with your watermark system at level 500. And then as time goes on, you will loot pieces of gear and as you loot a new piece of gear, it has a chance to watermark your prospect of gear that you will loot in the future. So you are looting 500 pieces of gear until you loot a 200 piece of gear, or sorry, a 502 piece of gear, and then you have a chance of looting a 504 piece of gear or a 503 piece of gear. So you have to do all this up to 600. What you're stuck with, what you're, uh, what you're- This is the exact same way that Destiny 2 worked. you're doing here is you're just repeating the exact same content over and over so the end game progression loop for people that are farming high watermark is to find a rare spawn that is not actively camped by too many players and then to repeatedly kill that rare spawn ad nauseum you just keep killing it for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and days and weeks and months and eventually you'll finally get a legendary item and then you'll be able to create these legendary items more often because your high watermark level will be higher and this high watermark level is not just something that appeals or applies as a general number this is something that applies for each individual slot so if you have a, you have a high watermark uh, level for your helmets, for your gloves, for your legs, for your chest piece. So you have to progress each and every single one of these up to level 600 and just higher and higher so you can get better rewards. Now, if you thought that was bad, it wasn't because you have to do the exact same thing with weapons. Additionally, before so we get good. into this whole patch, what you need to understand it is that Amazon works. Game Studios have made a really big push to communicate openly with their player base and it's something people have appreciated a lot, myself included, as it shows good faith on their part when addressing concerns and issues surrounding the game, of which there are many. So when I tell you that Amazon Game Studios, while championing that open communication, put out patch notes that didn't have half the changes included, and the changes that were conveniently left out are terrible ninja nerfs to the already terrible endgame progression system which players have reacted very negatively towards, you- They admitted shit? 
they literally admitted changes that they've made in the game? Oh shit. That's um that's that's right up there on the level of what Bungie did with the XP nerf. Yeah, good job. Yeah, that's that's a good way. We'll that's see the game here. It. They are openly communicating when it suits them and when the message will result in positive interaction, and then not communicating at all when they are well aware the message that needs to be conveyed will be received negatively, as this change absolutely would have been by anyone who understands New World current situation and progression path. You needed to do the same content over and over for potentially hundreds of hours to get your high watermark to 600 in each slot. Just killing the same elites over and over again, opening the same chests every day, and now they've made that considerably worse for anyone who was in the process of doing so, or would reach endgame post into the void patch and start this mindless dog shit grind. The reason for these changes are unknown, but if I did have to speculate, the Amazon Game Studios know they don't have enough endgame content in the pipeline about to release yep. to keep people playing the game. And they do have the numbers of how many people are already done with the endgame grinding and aren't confident in the repeatable content such as sieges and PvP, keeping those players active in the interim of- Why not let people do the dungeons? Why not let people grind the dungeons? Get rid of the tuning orbs. Just get rid of them. Just delete them. Just let literally anybody that wants to do a dungeon do a dungeon. No, we can't do that. Updates and decided it is best to pad out the game time to reach that point for any future players. New World's Endgame is Bilbo Baggins at the start of Lord of the Rings, like butter scraped across too much bread, only Amazon Game Studios just doubled the amount of bread without adding any more butter, didn't tell anyone who was eating the bread despite showing the recipe to their face before they did it, and then just hoped no one would notice. Speaking specifics in terms of these ninja nerfs, they have nerfed elite area loot, buffed elite area mobs, increased XP requirements for leveling up trades, for a serious answer, they've done a few ninja changes that heavily increase the playtime required to achieve your desired goals. Things they're done are reduced drop rates of armor and weapons, more so armor, and their quality. Increase XP requirements to level up trade skills, but didn't proportionally increase XP rewards from crafting. Significantly increase the HP of higher tier mobs as much as 40 times? Can you guys, can you guys say, spell bullet sponge? Made PvP nearly unplayable due to extreme lag. Well, PvP was already pretty bad. So <laughs> that's not going to change much. Secretly nerfed many items. Reports of people saying their items got downgraded. Weavers not losing double luck. Accidental deletion of harvesting items. Removal of mining nodes from the map. Oof. Skills while not increasing the XP rewards from crafting. Removed mining nodes from the map. And many more. I understand that this might not seem like a big deal to people on surface level because obviously nerfs and buffs happen all the time in live service games. So I will give you a brief summary of why this is so ridiculously bad for the game and why it's blatantly obvious they didn't include this in the patch notes. Spoiler, they knew it was ridiculously bad for the game and how it would be received. If this was released in alpha, like a real alpha, not the new world release that is basically like an alpha, it would still suck because they are essentially just making enemies Massive bullet sponges for the sake of artificially making one of the most poorly implemented. Doing three to five man elite zones with my friends was our favorite thing to do prior to the patch. Took a while, but it was fun and mildly rewarding. The content fell right for outside world content. Today at Reek, every mob had about three times the hit points it previously had. We got through it in an hour and a half compared to prior 30 minutes or so. Uh, if I wanted to play a bullet sponge game, I'd go play Division Destiny or even fucking Call of Duty Zombies. Those games aren't fun for me, but they're meant to be that way. I've been confused that decisions development team has made. I've been angry at quite a few, but I've never felt disappointment until today. Ooh, things aren't looking good. So, like I said, very quickly, let's just see if uh, if they get deleted any of my items. Because he was saying how um, some of the items have gotten deleted and whatnot. So let me just log into the game. And I should be able to see if they deleted anything off of me. I don't even remember exactly where my character was. So just that, just out of curiosity, do you think in a year from now this game will be relevant at all? I don't know, dude. It's gonna depend on what they do with it. OK. 
Okay, yeah, I know that I'm supposed to go pay my taxes or whatever. But listen, I'm taking a page out of Jeff Bezos' book and I'm not paying any taxes. No, I have all of my items. Not only that, it seems like they've repaired all of my items. Hey, I got I got the better end of the deal. They fixed my shit. No, I still have everything. I still have my 16,000 gold and my 2,000 repair pieces. I'm actually doing pretty good. Click here to repair all equipped gear at once. What do you mean? Everything looks fine to me. Everything looks pretty good. So yeah. Yeah, actually I'm, I'm fine. They didn't delete anything off of me, so you know. I'm one of the lucky few, I guess. Oh, well, looks like I even got attribute points to put in. Yeah, there you go. Needs more constitution. Alright. Uh, how's my map doing, I wonder? Hey! Look at that! There's actually two Marauder Outposts! Holy shit, dude! It's still chuck full of, like, piss yellow, but hey, you know, you can't have everything. Filthy covenant scum. All right. But hey, look, my, my, I still have all my items, so there's that. ...implemented and thought out endgame gear treadmills even longer. This is an endgame that has existed to be grindy and repetitive because they did not have enough time to make a real endgame progression system when changing from a sandbox where the whole game is the endgame to a theme park where you do have a beginning, a middle, and an end. But obviously this is on a live persistent full launch of a game, which makes it a lot worse since you've already lost a lot of your player base due to the burnout in middle phases of the game and the countless other issues, lag, lies, exploits, things just not working properly, not enough content, the list goes on. But with It's this like update lying to your player base at this point is literally one of the worst things that you can do. Because the few people that are left, these are the people that actually want to play your game. Like, even I, to an extent, I want to go back in and play the game. I do. I want to go back in and play the game. I haven't gone to because, you know, there's not really that much reason to do so right now. Because at this point, I don't even know where I would go. Because, like, I stopped playing on account of the fact that my server was so fucking tryhard that, you know, it was hard to just, like, find people that were doing the same content that you were doing because everybody's just, like, rocking all of the late game zones and doing all of that shit. And... I wanted to move to a, you know, a server that was more laid back and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And eventually when they enabled it, they fucking broke it and disabled it again. And I was like, oh, whatever. So I've been on a holding pattern. And the fact that the people that have been playing the game, despite the fact that it's in a pretty poor state, and now you're going to lie to their fucking face. It's like, listen, you can only piss on somebody's back for so long and call it rain until they figure out that rain doesn't necessarily fall warm unless you're in a tropical climate. But most of us don't live in tropical climates. So, you know, rain is usually cold. So if you're pissing on our backs and we feel the warmth, it's like, well, that's probably not rain. That's just piss. Six weeks post-launch, you basically just punished every single player who didn't get completely endgame geared before this patch went live despite them having done nothing wrong except taking their time with the game or joining late. This completely disincentivizes anybody new from getting into the game or anybody returning and going back on that grind to get to endgame. They will now have to take considerably more time to do what other people before them have done just to get to the same stage, which it's doesn't stupid. make it more fun, it doesn't make it more prestigious, they get no additional rewards, they have to do more, do it harder, do it longer, and the content they are doing has not changed in any other way to compensate for that. Because basically one of the main in-game progression loops inside of New World is looting chests. So the way this works is uh, a chest spawns and uh, it's an elite chest. Usually they're guarded by elites. And uh, in the process of this, you, uh, you will loot these chests and then they go on cooldown for 24 hours. And uh, after that 24 hours are up, you loot the chest again. And that's the whole game. On top of this, they buffed open world PvP flagging massively, meaning that the players who already got their gear have a massive advantage in open world content grinding and wealth acquisition over the players who just freshly hit 60 or might do in the future, who could flag up and then try to make this grind slightly more tolerable. They also launched a PTR a week or so ago, a public test realm, where they posted some of the changes, including weapon balance changes to that server, received overwhelmingly negative feedback about those changes, and then proceeded to push them to the live server regardless of said feedback with no changes whatsoever. Which means they either do not understand what a public test realm's purpose is 
or they're using it purely to test stability of the patch, which as we have proven from the multiple large scale tests of New World across 2020 and 2021 before launch, doesn't provide enough information to prevent large scale issues as we've seen the state of New World launching despite those tests occurring. So I've been incredibly critical of New World's development and of the development team due to things like this, which have been observable and persistent since early 2020, when we started to see the game shape up into what we have today, as opposed to what it was before. And I want to outline something for guys who think I just hate the game or the studio, that I wanted to fail or whatever other narrative you wish to craft. I want the game to succeed, but I'm also not cuckolded into thinking that you can't criticize something just because you want it to be good. Me exactly. wanting something to be good doesn't detract from the actual issues that exist or talking about them, which should shine a light on them and hopefully get them fixed. And to me, clearly the current development team either have their hands tied by the tech and the deadlines that they're working with, or they're just not up to the task. It's one or the other, or maybe a combination of all. I said in a recent video that when Amazon Game Studios makes one intended change, they make two unintended changes. When they plug one hole, what comes out of two others? Despite the fact that this game is facing absolutely unprecedented amounts of issues for a AAA released MMORPG, they've pushed out a fairly sizable update that was pretty much untested. The things that were tested, people had issues with, putting a bunch of things nobody got to test or see before it went onto a live service, and they do this while people are already quitting the game in droves. And within 24 hours of releasing, there's already been huge errors found in the game due to this patch. And I have to ask, what unintended exploits and bugs are we going to expect to be discovered in the next few weeks? The game's already seen new duplications of wealth discovered almost daily for weeks now. And then you add a bunch of content in that's been untested. Yeah, this is worrying. To illustrate this, here's what happened during the Into the Void's release, as confirmed by Amazon Game Studios team themselves. Every single player in the game had their harvesting gear deleted, and I am talking about the actual gear called harvesting gear. They logged on and it was just gone, outright deleted from the game. Oof. So as you can see here, Tiger Crane, a new world developer, posted 19 hours ago regarding this. They mistakenly treated all tiers of the in-game horticulture gear as future content and unintentionally removed them from the game. He says this is an embarrassing mistake to make, that is squarely our fault. We apologize to our players who have had their harvesting and trading disrupted as a result. They are going to replace their lost items in the next patch and they will make this right by, and this is the best part, giving every player who had ever earned a single piece of this gear an entire set of the gear at the highest tier of the piece that they had. So again, they rush out a patch in a rushed out game that is already suffering from tons oh of issues, God. delete people's gear, and then in a game where the economy and progress is already in a terrible state, just generate entire sets of gear for people to make it right. On top of this, they just nerfed people's items that they'd already acquired in the game. From a Reddit thread and multiple threads on the New World official forums, you're going to see people talking about this, where they bought items, crafted items, acquired items in some way. They were, say, a purple with X gear score and X perks. And then they log in and it's a green that is just completely worthless. Just, just nerfing items that people had worked for, for seemingly no reason. At this point, it's hard to keep the That's faith in Amazon Game Studios and their ability to take this game from what it is now and into the future as one of the most popular games in the genre, I'm as was so the sad. expectation and potential of New World as a project, which maybe is misplaced because it is a new studio, technically, uh, building their first MMORPG. And I actually love New World, despite what people want to say. I actually do enjoy the game. I love the feeling of the game and playing New World. But watching them repeatedly make ridiculous, embarrassing mistakes like this leaves me with no confidence whatsoever in the game and the people managing the game, whether that is the developers, whether that's the higher ups that are pushing them in the wrong direction. I don't know who it is, but this is just a problem. And I do feel bad for the developers because I honestly believe they are being held to some ridiculous deadlines from higher ups, as I don't believe anyone who knows what they're doing enough to be hired as a lead for a project this big would repeatedly make the same mistakes and continue to rush out content but I might just be giving them too much credit on this one. I don't know. And this could just be what we expect from all levels of the studio going forward. To address the elephant in the room, New World is not the worst game ever made. And perhaps you have a point if you say that this game is getting more criticism than the other games that have released with similar issues or more criticism than you think is fair. You might be right that New World is getting more criticism than other games and maybe it's unfair. I don't really agree with that sentiment. But either way, playing the whataboutism game does not change the fact that this game is being mismanaged, that these issues objectively exist, that it's bad for the future of the game, and it's harming the prospects of success. I hope they can do better, 
And as consumers, we should all be on the same page here, expecting better. Ultimately, what we want, or what I assume we all want, is a better product that is more worth our time. And I don't think criticism detracts from that. If telling the truth about something and acknowledging problems makes the game die, which some people have been saying, content creators are killing this game by discussing the issues. If telling the truth kills a game, the, the game didn't deserve to live. That's just my what? take on it. Thanks as always for watching. Leave a like and a comment on this video to help it in the algorithm and subscribe. We don't talk about these problems. If we don't talk about them, they'll go away. It's like, yeah, let's bury our heads in the sand like we're a fucking ostrich and it'll be fine. It'll be fine. That is so dumb. That is such a dumb opinion that, like, serious content creators are the problem. Yes, yes, we're clearly the problem. Jesus Christ. If you do enjoy the content, all free, takes two seconds, really helps me out. I would appreciate it. Check out my Patreon if you want to support my content with some dollar bills each month. Twitch, Twitter, and Discord to come join the conversation. Special shout out to all my Patreon and YouTube members, as well as my Twitch subscribers. And hopefully, I'll see you on the next one. Appreciate you all. Stay safe out there. We're out. Peace. It's so disappointing that they can't seem to get their heads out of their asses. Like, seriously, Amazon Games, like, just, just get your heads out of your... What the fuck, dude? The game... It's like, again, it's it's that old it's that old thing, because I know that I've said this I multiple so times. Grossly but it's like, it's that old thing of like, oh, this game has so much potential. Yeah, every game has tons of potential. It's just nowadays, companies can't just, like, release a proper fucking game, dude. Jesus Christ. Friendslayer Paladin, thank you very much for becoming grossly incandescent. Tip of the hat. Appreciate the support. Thank you. Thank you very much. But, dude, this, this is very frustrating. It really is. Because, like, basically at this point, you can't trust almost any video game release. I was expecting to be playing this game... To kind of like fill that void between now and Endwalker. But I've just been playing Final Fantasy XIV instead. Because at least in there, I know that the stuff that I'm doing counts for something. Most of the stuff that is happening with New World is just like... Still, like I said, you know, I got like 150 hours out of it. That's all right. Maybe I'll play it some more in the future. Who knows? But not until they get their heads out of their asses. I think I'm, I'm going to go back in there when they release the Blunderbuss. To check out the Blunderbuss. But that's probably still going to take a while. So, yeah.